following will be a selection of poems from Poetry for Young People, Walt Whitman, by Jonathan Levin, illustrated by Jim Burke. The first poem is from Whitman's poetry surrounding land and uh, farmsteads, and it is entitled Miracles. Why, who makes much of a miracle? As to me, I know of nothing else but miracles. Whether I walk the streets of Manhattan or dart my sight over the roofs of houses towards the sky, or wade with naked feet along the beach just in the edge of the water, or stand under trees in the woods, or talk by day with anyone I love, or sleep in bed at night with anyone I love, or sit at table at dinner with the rest, or look at strangers opposite me riding in the car, or watch honeybees busy around the hive of a summer forenoon, or animals feeding in the fields, or birds, or the wonderfulness of insects in the air, or the wonderfulness of the sundown, or of, or of the stars shining so quiet and bright, or the exquisite delight thin curve of the new moon in spring. These with the rest, one and all, are to me miracles. The whole referring yet each distinct and in its place. To me, every hour of the light and dark is a miracle. Every cubic inch of space is a miracle. Every square yard of the surface of the earth is spread with the same. Every foot of the interior swarms with the same. To me, the sea is a continual miracle. The fishes that swim, the rocks, the motion of the waves, the ship with men in them. What stranger miracles are there? And then from the same theme, we have oh. And then from the same theme, we have sparkles from the wheel. Where the city's ceaseless crowd moves on the live long day. Withdrawn, I join a group of children watching. I pause aside with them. By the curb toward the edge of the flagging, a knife grinder works at his wheel, sharpening a great knife. Bending over, he carefully holds it to the stone, by foot and knee. With measured tread, he turns rapidly as he presses with light but firm hand. Fourth issue, then in copious golden jets, sparkles from the wheel. The scene and all its belongings, how they seize and affect me. The sad, sharp-chinned old man with worn clothes and broad shoulder band of leather. Myself diffusing and fluid, a phantom curiously floating, now here absorbed and arrested. The group, an unminded point set in a vast surrounding, the attentive, quiet children, the loud, proud, restive base of the streets, the low horse purr of the whirling stone, the light pressed blade, diffusing, dropping, sideways darting, in tiny showers of gold, sparkles from the wheel. Following a different theme now, uh, where Whitman chooses to look at 
the oceans and water and the environment that surrounds those places. We have the world below the brine with an introduction as follows. In describing the world be beneath the surface of the sea, Whitman again uses the catalog, here to emphasize with great variety of life found deep in the sea. In the last two lines of this poem, he speculates about how our human life might appear to beings inhabiting other spheres of which we are unaware. And then the poem continues as this. The world below the brine. The world below the brine. Forests at the bottom of the sea, the branches and leaves. Sea lettuce, vast lichens, strange flowers and seeds, the thick tangle, openings and pink turf, different colors, pale gray and green, purple, white, and gold, the play of light through water, dumb swimmers there among the rocks, coral, glutton, grass, rushes, and the alignment of swimmers, sluggish existences, grazing there suspended or slowly crawling close to the bottom, the sperm whale at the surface, blowing air and spray, or disporting with his flukes. The laden, the leaden-eyed shark, the walrus, the turtle, the hairy sea leopard, and the stingray. Passions there, wars, pursuits, tribes, sights in those ocean depths, breathing that thick breathing air, as so many do. The change thence to the sight here, and to the subtle air breathed, breathed by beings like us who walk this sphere. The change onward from ours to that of beings who walk other spheres. And then from the same theme, we have, oops. And then from the same theme of being at sea, we have, did you read in the sea books? Did you read in the sea books of the old fashioned frigate fight? Did you learn who won by the light of the moon and stars? Our foe was no skulk in his ship, I tell you. His was the English pluck, and there is no tougher or truer, and never was, and never will be. Along the lowered eve he came, horribly raking us. We closed with him, the yards entangled, the cannon touched. My captain lashed fast with his own hands. We had received some eighteen-pound shots under the water. On our lower gun deck, two large pieces had burst at the first fire, killing all around and blowing up overhead. Ten o'clock at night, and the full moon shining, and the leaks on the gain, and five feet of water reported. The master at arms, loosing the prisoners confined in the afterhold to give them a chance for themselves. The transit to and from the magazine was now stopped by the sentinels. They saw so many strange faces that they did not know whom to trust. Our frigate was afire. The other asked if we damned court, if we demanded quarters, if our colors were struck and the fighting done. I laughed content when I heard the voice of my little captain. We have not struck, he composedly cried. We have just begun our part of the fighting. Only three guns were in use. One was directed by the captain himself against the enemy's main mast. Two well served with grape and canister silenced his musketry and cleared his decks. The tops alone seconded the fire of this little battery, especially the main top. They all held out bravely during the whole of the action. Not a moment cease. The leaks gained fast on the pumps. The fire eat toward the gunpowder magazine. One of the pumps was shot away. It was generally thought we were sinking. Serene stood the little captain. 
He was not hurried. His voice was neither high nor low. His eyes gave more light to us than our battle lanterns. Toward twelve at night, there in the beams of the moon, they surrendered to us.